Welcome everyone to the beautiful city of Sangolki. We are in Sangolki, Ecuador, which is uh, just a few, like about 20 minutes car ride outside of uh, the city of Quito in a beautiful area of Ecuador called Valle de los Chilos, the Valley of the Screams. And today we're going to explore around uh, we're gonna explore around this beautiful town, Sangolki. It's Sunday, there is a market going on, like a big outdoor market, just or, like around the corner here. And uh, there's an interesting history here too, in uh, Sangolki. And uh, we're gonna check it out, so come along. Before we do that, I just wanna say real quick, thank you very much for watching the video. Click the like button and the subscribe button and leave a comment down below. It's free, it's easy, and it will help the channel grow and help this content reach other YouTube viewers. All right, back to the video. So, Sangolki, you can see here the beautiful little streets. These little like pedestrian streets right off of the square. Sangolki is a very, very old town. It's like 500 years old almost, Sangolki. And, uh, it's very, it's like southeast of Quito. Like I said, about a 20 minute car ride. Very close, very easy to get to. Although you do have to take like a taxi or an Uber to get here because uh, there's no bus. There's no bus that runs here, at least not one that I could find that runs here to Sangolki. But still, taking an Uber, taking a taxi, something like that, very easy. Not too expensive because it's not very far away. But, it has a very, very different feel already, you know, like, it's a very, um, much more of like a small town feel, but it's still very busy. There's a lot of stuff going on here, even on a Sunday. Um, this reminds me actually a lot of our visit uh, to Rancagua. Rancagua in uh, Chile, which is just south of Santiago. Same sort of thing, it's like a regional, um, agricultural city, like for an agricultural area. In fact, um, maiz or corn is very, very like important, the agriculture of it around this area. And this is actually like a market town. So like I mentioned in our intro, there is a outdoor like farmer's market going on right now. And that happens on Thursdays and Sundays. And people like Farmers and artisans and people from all over the area, they all come here and they bring all their stuff to the market to sell on uh, on Sundays and on Thursdays. So we're going to check that out. But I just wanted to walk around the streets a little bit and just give you an idea of what it's like in this beautiful little town. I mean, we literally just arrived. Arrived, showed up in the... Uh, in the central square, poked around just a little bit, turned the camera on. Got a got a ride over here, and um, and we went through the market on our way over. Actually, we drove through there, so I saw it, and it's really cool. A lot of stuff going on, lots of people, very busy, and we want to go over there and check that out. Now, one of the things that I've heard. One of the things I've heard about the market is that there are people selling uh, a specific kind of food that I kind of want to try. Apparently, there is like a, uh, a grub, the grub of a beetle, right? Like a little worm, right? That... Uh, lives out in the jungle down on the other side basically on the other side of the mountains in the amazon and apparently here at the market you can get them like as a snack they take the grubs and they deep fry them and you can eat them as a snack i think it's called cacho i'm not sure but we're gonna find out and if we can i think we're gonna try it i think we're gonna eat we're gonna eat a grub we're gonna eat a beetle grub. Why am I doing this? Well, it'll be interesting. Let's go find the market. 
I think we're headed towards the market here because the streets are already very busy. It's a lot of uh, a lot of people out along the streets. A lot of street vendors. A whole lot of street vendors. Of course, the stores are all open too, like along this street, and uh, they'll be selling stuff as well. But I do see a lot of street vendors around selling fruit and drinks and and vegetables and all kinds of different stuff. I think if we keep going this way though, we hit the market. There's a bunch of people here selling, selling hats. Gift shop over there. Gotta be careful not to get run over here while we're filming. Been really good about that so far. Always make that joke, right? Always make the joke, try not to get run over, but that's not a, that's no joke, man. Especially here in Ecuador. The uh, pedestrians do not have the right of way, like in Ecuador at all. The cars have the right of way. So if you're uh, not paying attention, cross the street at the wrong time, you, you might get run over. Actually, I'm gonna go across the street, the other side here. Oh yeah, okay, so we're here. This is the market. Traffic is like completely stopped here. So there is like a normal mercado here. Just like there is in most, like, well, pretty much every city. Every city, every town in Ecuador has like a mercado where you can go, get all the fresh fruit and vegetables, meat, fish, all kinds of stuff. But this is different. This is like a thing that only happens every uh, every Thursday and Sunday. And these are people that come from, from all over the place, the whole area, and bring their goods here to market. Yeah. This is cool. Vegetables. All the meat markets over here. And there's lots of people here. We're here in like the late morning. We're here in the late morning, like around, uh, I don't know, 10.30, 11 or so in the morning. And man, there's a lot of people here. People selling all kinds of stuff. All right, we want to keep our now. We want to keep our eyes peeled for the uh, cacho, right? And we want to see if this is actually a thing. I've heard this is a thing. Well, I can smell stuff frying over here. So we're in like the now the the restaurant food section where people are cooking up food. Oh man, and it looks and smells delicious. Seafood. Cooking up encebollados. The delicious um, fish and onion stew that we've been having here. Yeah, and we're actually like, we're sort of coming to the end of our stay here in Quito. We've been here in Quito for a while. We've been here in Ecuador for a while, and uh, unfortunately, we're coming to the end of, uh, of our visa period in Ecuador. We uh, originally, you know, when I came here, I only really wanted to go to Quito or to uh, Cuenca. I didn't really have a plan beyond that, but I liked Cuenca so much, and I enjoyed Ecuador so much because the people, oh, look at this delicious soup. The people here were super nice, and I just really enjoyed everything about it. And so it made me want to stay more, stay longer, right? And so we've been here for a while. And uh, we're actually going to be leaving. We're going to be leaving soon. Uh, leaving Ecuador and going to, uh, to a different country. No spoilers. You'll see soon what country we're going to. But um, before I left Quito, before I left Ecuador, I wanted to come out and see this place. And I wanted to come out on market day because I had heard that it was really cool. And uh, it is. It's very, very cool.
people selling like sugar cane, sugar, cane sugar there, vegetables, all kinds of delicious stuff. All right, I think we need to go and look for cacho, right? We came here on the promise that we would be able to eat fried worms. And now we gotta go, now we gotta find some cacho. I'm gonna look around a little bit more and I'm gonna see if we can find someone. And if we can't, then I'm just gonna ask somebody. But for now, I'm just gonna look around and see. Look, if we, if we can't get this, then we'll have some something as a substitute. We're gonna eat something because it's getting close to lunchtime. And I haven't eaten anything today and I'm getting hungry, honestly. I will say one thing. Uh, based on the height of all these umbrellas that are covering all the stalls, I am too tall for this place. I'm looking around and I am uh, confident in saying that I am the tallest person in this market. And because I am tall and I am obviously a gringo, and uh, I'm walking around with a camera and talking to myself like an idiot. Everybody is staring at me. But you know, what are you gonna do? What else is new, right? Man, there is so much delicious looking food around this place. All right, we gotta find cacho. We're gonna find some cacho. I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn the camera off now and, and go on a, a hardcore search uh, for some, for cachos. And if I find it, I'll turn the camera back on. If I don't find it, whatever it is I eat, I'll turn the camera back on too. So unfortunately, or fortunately, we were not able to find cacho. I asked uh, a few people and this one woman who uh, was selling fried corn with uh, chincharon, right? With like fried pork in it. She said uh, that, yeah, she sells cacho, cachitos, she's called them, little, the little grubs. And, uh, you know, they sell them like uh, fried and they put them on a skewer, they line them all up on a skewer. She said, yeah, she sells them, but they're not in season right now. And they only sell them really here from like August to September, August and September. So, unfortunately, we missed out on trying cacho, which, uh, means that I don't have to eat like a bug or a fried fried grub um, on camera for all you people. But that's okay, I would have done it. I, I swear I would have done it. And maybe at some point we'll be back here in the future sometime and we'll remember August and September is the time to come here uh, to get fried worms or fried grubs. Anyway, I'm back here in the uh, beautiful plaza right in the center of uh, Sangoki. And uh, I'm gonna eat my uh, fried corn and chincharon as a little uh, little snack. Then I think I'm gonna go back over to the market and maybe try and get like lunch. Um, but there was really nowhere to sit down over there um, unless you were at one of the restaurants and I didn't, uh, I wasn't so. But we may go over there again, try to get lunch from one of the, the little restaurant stalls in the market. And the other thing I wanna try while I'm here is there are apparently like heladerias that are like really, really old here, um, you know, 80, 90 years old, and they do like a, a sorbet, right? Like a dairy-free um, ice cream, different fruit flavors. It's supposed to be very good. I'm gonna try and find one of those around here. And uh, also wanna talk a little bit about the history of Sangolki because there is some interesting stuff that happened here. So uh, we'll see you after I'm done with my little snack here. So we found a little city museum, museum and cultural center of the city, and uh, it's free to get in. So I figured while we're waiting to uh, digest our first little snack, which was delicious by the way, of course it's delicious. It's like deep fried corn and pork skin. We could take a look around this, uh, this little museum. So there, that mountain right there is Cotopaxi. Cotopaxi is a volcano, it's an active volcano. It's actually just south of here. We may actually be able to see it from somewhere in the city. So 
See, here's uh, Cotopaxi, right? The volcano. Now, it is still active. Apparently, like, I don't know, every, every few years or so, it puffs off a little smoke, you know, just to, like, let everybody know <laughs> that it's serious. Anyway, so a little bit of the history here. The, uh, the Spanish, you know, they were here in, like, the 1500s, back when they were when they uh, uh, conquered the Inca and took over basically all of Ecuador. But the real interesting thing about this place, Sangolqui, and the uh, Valley of the Screams, Valle de los Chilos, the real interesting thing is this is the place in 1809 where like the first, um, uh, like the, the conspiracy to uh, to rebel against the Spanish. This is where it started, right here. And they called it the Christmas Conspiracy because it happened in uh, December of 1809. So like the first group secretly got together to start the planning for rebellion against the Spanish, which of course didn't uh, culminate until here in Ecuador until like the Battle of Pinchicha, right? Which we've uh, we've talked about in our previous video where we took the cable car up to Pinchicha. That was in 1822. So many, many years in between, but it all started here in December 1809, the Christmas Conspiracy. There's a Jesuit hacienda. The Jesuits had haciendas here as well. We have a whole uh, series of videos, two videos from Cordoba in Argentina about the Jesuits. Very interesting. I'll put the links to all these videos, of course, down in the description. When we were walking around on the streets, um, you can see that it's like very narrow streets, cobblestone streets, narrow sidewalks, very similar to like uh, Cuenca, the Centro Historico in Cuenca where we were. So these are the multinational army of the Battle of Pinchicha. And we talked about Pinchicha in that previous video, but you know, the, the, to reiterate, there were uh, armies from all over South America, Peruvian, Gran Colombian, even from Rio de la Plata in Argentina. Looks like this is the march from, let's see, yeah, so this is basically how the march of the armies of Gran Colombia and, and the, the multinational army came from the port cities down in Guayaquil and Machala up through the Andes here to Loja and Saraguro and then up through Cuenca. Now they had actually tried um, a couple of times here at Huachi, near Ambato. There were two battles here where uh, Antonio José de Sucre and the army of Gran Colombia tried to uh, ascend the Andes, basically like from Guayaquil up this way, uh, up to Huachi, and they were repelled. And so in the third time, they came up through Cuenca with an overwhelming force for the garrison, the Spanish garrison that was garrisoned in Cuenca. They retreated without a fight. They were able to liberate Cuenca and then basically liberate all of these towns along the way with either no fight or very little fight. There was a small battle outside of Riobamba and then they were able to liberate here and continue to push the royalist forces all the way up here until eventually Benjicha on the... Uh, on the slopes of Mount Pinchicha, the culminating battle. Batalla del Pinchicha, 24th of May, 1822. Ah, and here, the people growing corn, because as I mentioned, corn, very important, uh, very important crop to this area as agricultural area. All the different types of corn here. Yeah, and the 
corn that we had in there, our snack, I think is this choclo, right? It's like a, it's like a corn, you don't see it very much in the United States. It's a corn with like very large kernels. It's very starchy. Um, it looks kind of similar to this, like blanco, but it's like very starchy, has very large kernels, and um, you see it in like soups and stuff like that, and different, um, like we ate it a lot in Peru when we were there in Lima, and here in, um, it, well, both in Peru and also here in Ecuador, they have like maiz tostado, which is what we got, our snack that we got, like fried big choclo, right? Big uh, kernels of corn. Really delicious. I'm super addicted to it. And you can get it not just like at little mercados like this, but they sell it like mass produced. You go to the grocery store, you go to like the aisle where all the snacks are and they have maiz tostado. It's really, really good. Some photographs from the 20th century here, bullfighting. Bullfighting, which as we know from our uh, video in uh, Rio Bamba, where we went past that bullfighting ring, they, uh, they outlawed bullfighting back in 2011 here in Ecuador. All right, I think we can just go out this way. Yeah, there's like a little courtyard area out here with a corn sculpture. Because of course corn, very important. Very important around here. And uh, I think that's it for the little museum. It was nice, it was cool. Uh, I don't know how to get out of here. That gate's closed. I think we have to go back in through the museum to get out anyway. That was cool, that was a good experience and I'm glad we got to go in there and also talk a little bit about like the history of the uh, the area here in uh, Valle, La Valle de los Chilos, the Valley of the Screams. Um, but I think we're gonna go back now to the market. We'll go back to the Mercado and we will try to get some uh, some delicious food for lunch and then for a dessert I want to try and find that really old heladeria and get uh, get some like ice cream some sorbet and maybe as a bonus if we can find we can find a spot somewhere in the city where we get a good view of Cotopaxi I don't know if we will be able to or not but we'll try so the central plaza here I didn't really put two and two together on this but it's a uh, parque Juan de Salinas. Parque Juan de Salinas. Now, we were in the museum over there and we talked about the Christmas conspiracy in 1809. Juan de Salinas was uh, the guy in charge. He's like the leader of the conspiracy. And he and his other conspirators, their revolution attempt in 1810 um, was, it failed, unfortunately. The, the Spanish were able to come in and quash the revolution and he was imprisoned along with all of his uh, conspirators, co-conspirators, and they actually died in prison. Um, some of the like family members and other co-conspirators who were not imprisoned attempted to, uh, to get them out of jail, to like break them out and help them escape in, uh, in 1810. And that failed, that escape attempt failed. And as, I guess, as like punishment for, uh, for the escape attempt, uh, Juan de Salinas and all of his, um, his co-conspirators that were in prison were, were murdered by the guards in, in prison. So it's a pretty grisly story. Oh, got pigeons. Pretty grisly story, but a very, very interesting one. And an important one for here in, uh, in um, Sangolqui. And actually, up here in the church, I think up here they actually have like the mausoleum, Juan de Salinas mausoleum. I 
think is up here in the church. But um, because it's a Sunday, there's like services going on all day and I don't want to go in there and be the idiot tourist who like tries to film inside the church and tries to like go and find the mausoleum. So just know Juan de Salinas, his mausoleum is inside that church. Anyway, enough, enough stalling, enough stalling. It's time to go back to the Mercado, get ourselves some lunch, and then we're gonna go to the Jalaria, which I think is right over on the other side of the, the square. I saw a place called Jalaria Victoria, which kind of looked like it was the place. I think it is. So we're gonna go there after. But first, back to the market, which is like right up here. The market and the square back there, the plaza, are really only like a block away. When we walked over before, I went a little ways around, right? Uh, because I wanted to see some of the streets, see what it was like. But the, the market and the plaza are very close, very close to each other. Man, this is a really cool town. Really glad we came out here, not gonna lie. Whenever I go to uh, different cities, you know, we've been to all these big cities, in South America, in different countries, but it's always nice to get just a little bit outside of the city to like a smaller city or a smaller town and see what it's like out there because it's very different. I mean, this, right, is very, very different than like Quito where we've been staying, big metropolitan city of Quito. So it's cool. It's cool to come out and check this stuff out. All right, it's time, time to get ourselves something to eat, some lunch. Let's find it, let's find some good lunch. So we're gonna get a plate of, uh, right here at this awesome stall, we're gonna get a plate of like some delicious uh, fried uh, like a chicken cutlet with just some uh, some fries, right? And uh, maduros, which is like a ban like a fried banana. It's gonna be delicious. It looks like they serve some other stuff here. Like I can tell from the from this, like right here, that's like the fried um, blood that they use to make that soup. The soup that we had in uh, in Rio Bamba, ya Yahual. What's it called? Yahuarocra? Yahuarocra? It's like a soup made with like sheep's entrails and blood and... Anyway, it was actually really good. Uh, it's in our video about uh, the food of Ecuador. That was a delicious meal and uh, like plate of food like that they bought me a big bottle of water from like one of the stores nearby actually and uh, the whole thing is like three dollars so of course that's a very Ecuador thing lunch in Ecuador is very cheap and delicious <clears throat> back here in the square plaza Juan de Salinas church service is still going on and I think it's time now that we visit Eladeria Victoria it's right across the square here right over there and Eladeria Victoria is like 80 years old apparently and they do like uh, a special kind of uh, like ice cream I guess it's not ice cream because it doesn't have dairy in it it's called Paelda, Palida. I can't remember the name of it exactly, but it's supposed to be like fruit flavored and very delicious and very famous because, you know, like I said, it's been here on the square for like 80 years. You can see it right over there in front of us. Let's go over and check it out. Let's get ourselves a delicious helado. I think that'll be a good way to uh, 
to finish off our visit here to Sangolki. a few blocks south out of the center, the center of the city, and right there, off in the distance, the snow-capped mountain on the left. I'll zoom in. I believe that that is Cotopaxi. It looks kind of small compared to the other mountains, but that's because it's behind a mountain range. There's like a mountain range out in front, and Cotopaxi is behind it. And that's it right there, Cotopaxi. Active volcano and uh, one of the tallest mountains in Ecuador. Not the tallest mountain in Ecuador, but one of the tallest mountains in Ecuador. Tall enough that it has snow all over the top of it. And I think with that, we're gonna end the video because we've seen, uh, I think what we came here to see, spent uh, a few hours walking around the town. It's very, very nice. The central square, the Plaza Juan de Salinas, is really, really beautiful. Um, and the market, it was great. It's great to come here on a Sunday. And if you do come here, make sure to come on a Sunday or a Thursday to check out the market. Feria, Feria de, uh, de San, San Gorki. And, um, you know, there's lots of stalls, lots of places selling fruits, vegetables, all kinds of stuff. And if you come, apparently during August or September, You'll be, you'll be able to eat uh, cacho, the little grubs. And maybe at some point in the future, we'll be back here um, in Ecuador, we'll be back in Quito, and we'll be here in August or September, and we'll be able to go back to that market, and maybe we'll get some cacho. We'll actually eat a grub, a deep fried grub. But for now, I think we're gonna wrap up the video. We're gonna find a ride back to the city, and um, we're getting close to the end of our stay here in Quito. Um, there's going to be one more video, and after that, we're going to be moving on. But uh, I hope you enjoyed this video, and we'll see you around. Mm -hmm.